So you guys want to put an electric radiator fan in your car, huh? That's cool. back to another video we're back in the garage yeah! again you're welcome so for those of you that didn't enjoy my last video about the can-am i apologize now we're back here talking about the super again those of you in the comments we're writing we want more we want to see more of the supra we want more we want more like you really like it right. you want more well you're welcome here we are we're back so this is one of the questions that i get quite a bit and that is Electric radiator fans, um, what am I doing on my car as far as electric radiator fans go? I am running kind of a different setup. So for those of you that have seen my other videos, you see that we go up in the canyon quite a bit. That little canyon area is like, I don't know, like seven minutes from my house. So it's like just right there. You can see the mountains right up my front window. It's pretty awesome. But what I'm going to show you today is the setup that I have on my car. And that is an electric radiator fan and the regular clutch fan that comes factory on the car. So to give you guys just a little bit of a background, you can see right there, okay? I've got a Mishimoto uh, electric radiator fan there. I do not have anything else in here, okay? So if you guys are still running your AC, you'll have a condenser, you'll have all that stuff in there. So you'll see there's a ton of room. There's so much room in there. Look at all this floor oh, space. So much with aerobics in here. But I'm going to explain why I have this and this. So now because of the canyon, I don't know exactly what the elevation uh, change rate is. It's pretty high because we have a ton of ski resorts that are up in that area. So I'll put a little clip here. This little area is just before one of the major ski resorts here in Utah. So because of the elevation change, these car, well not these cars, but cars in general tend to run pretty hot. So what I've done is I put an electric rate, electric rate, the, so what I've done is put an electric radiator fan on the front, acting as a pusher, and then the radiator fan, the clutch fan that comes factor in the car is acting like a, as a puller. So that way I don't have any air cavitating in that area between the intercooler and the radiator. Now I have had some of you guys just say, why not just run dual radiator fans, electric, electric fans? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I have had problems with this before. I have tried to run dual electric radiator fans and get rid of the clutch fan and the car was overheating pretty bad. Now I had other issues at the time, so I don't know if the radiator fans just, they were working and maybe they're with the other issues going on, it just wasn't keeping the, the radiator cool. I don't know. But I put the clutch fan back on and I haven't had any issues since. So unless this thing is on its way out and causing some major issues and not cooling, I'm not gonna replace it. They Toyota did this for a reason. But the electric fan is nice because I have it on a switch and I can just turn it on as I need it. So I can watch the temperatures, if the temperatures start rising, as I'm getting on it, going up the canyon, I can just flip the switch and, you know, we're good to go. Now, how I have it set up in here, and I'll show you guys the relay part of it and how to actually wire it up. It's, it's not that difficult, but it can be a little confusing. So in here, I've got, it might be a little hard to see, but you can hear my, my battery tender is on still because it's cold and the battery's dying. So in here, it might be like it's a little hard to see. I've got some, my nitrous stuff here that's all hooked up so that I can turn that on. I can purge the nitrous valve here, so that's what that all is. And then here is the toggle switch for the radiator fan. Like I said, I don't want the radiator fan on all the time, so I hit that switch. And the fan's going. Pretty straightforward. Later on in the future, if I decide to, I'll pull the clutch fan off and I'll run some gigantic electric radiator fans. So I don't know if you guys have had this problem before, Throw a comment down, maybe that'll help someone else. But you've got to run some big, big electric fans for these uh, for these cars, for the 7M in general. Maybe I just, it was a fluke deal for me, but it was running super hot. I've actually blown up two radiators in this car, and I don't know if that's because, I don't think it's head gasket issues, because that stuff was all resolved before I even got the car. But I literally blew the top off of the factory radiator years ago, and I've changed over to an aluminum radiator, haven't had any problems since. The aluminum, ra aluminum radiator is a lot thicker, so I've had to do some things to try to get the radiator fit, and I'll show you guys here. 
So you can see this size right here is a lot bigger. Like you can see it hangs over this portion here. The factory uh, brackets actually still hold it in place just fine, but you can see it's substantially wider. So this, when I'm running on here, I thought about running a Mishimoto or a Kyo route or, or something, but this is actually just an eBay brand radiator. I just did it because I blew the top off of the factory radiator. Like it literally blew the joint of the plastic and this whole part came off and it just sprayed coolant everywhere. I don't know why it did that. Um, I don't know if there was just air in the system or whatever it may be. So I figured at the time I was just going to, you know, risk it, try my hand at one of these uh, eBay. It was still like 200 bucks for this radiator and it's about $380 for the Mishimoto one. I have heard that the Mishimoto ones are not the best. Don't get mad at me for those of you that have Mishimoto radiators. I've had buddies have issues with the Mishimoto radiators. Actually, the E36 in the video that you guys see at the very beginning, the, the opening intro, he had a Mishimoto radiator on his car and it was garbage. I don't know if there was issues with it beforehand. When he got the car, there was tons of corrosion on Like it was a mess. So he had to replace pretty much everything. And I believe he actually went back to stock. So I don't know. Jake might be watching this. He may be able to comment on that. But I know he had a ton of issues with that. So believe it or not, this cheapo eBay radiator has actually been doing pretty good. I've been kind of hammered on the car quite a bit, and I've never seen that car go above whatever. I mean, I've never seen it overheat. I've never seen it go above a temperature that was concerning. So the the middle line, this is a good indicator, the middle line for the coolant sensor, coolant temp, it never went above the middle, whatever. I don't have an actual digital temperature gauge to tell me what the actual temps are. I will now with a standalone, but as of right now, currently running on on the stock ECU, I don't have that. So I just look at the gauge and call it good. If you guys are interested, I'll try to find this exact radiator that I purchased. It's been in the car for a while now. I will put it in the description. That way you guys can, or put put a link in the description. That way you guys can buy the same radiator, knowing that I haven't had any issues. Everything seems to hook up just fine. I haven't had to modify anything. And like I said, the actual, uh, the brackets that hold the radiator down, I didn't have to modify those. They all just went right in. The only thing I had to do was trim like this little lip. So you can kind of see right there, that tiny little piece of metal that runs all the way along here. I did have to get a right angle grinder and cut that off. It's almost kind of like this right here. You have like a little lip right there. It's not as big as this, but I had to trim that down to get this to sit flat against the radiator support there. Okay, so now wiring. If you guys watch my other videos, I'm not a wiring expert, okay? My ECU master, it's like, it's an absolute mess. I'm gonna go back in and clean all that stuff up and I'll show you guys that whole process. Little quick update on that. It's been so cold, guys. Like right now, it was actually a little bit warmer today and we actually just had a snowstorm yesterday. It wasn't super crazy, but it is freezing outside. Being in the garage, I wanted to hurry and do this video, get another video out there for you guys. But right now I'm freezing. I'm in short sleeves and it's a little chilly. It's been taking a little bit of time. I know you guys are anxious to see it. I'm anxious to get this thing back on the road and going. For those of you that saw my other videos, I can't get the car registered because it's running so rich that if I were to put it through the emission process and they were to do a sniff test on the exhaust, there's no way it'd pass. So anyways, I'll, I'll get to that guys, don't worry. I'm just as eager as you are. The thing's gonna be so awesome when it runs and I can't wait, but enough about that. Okay, so for wiring, it's not hard. There's only four things you need. And I have a little list over here and I will even show you guys. I wrote it down so you guys can see it. Four things, you'll need 12 volt ignition, 12 volt constant, a wire to the accessory, and then ground. So it's, it's not super difficult. And then you just need like a, a little 40 amp fuse. You can get one from just your regular auto parts store. Oh, for the purpose of the video, you can see here, I usually have it bolted up there, but I took it off just so you guys can see it. There's my wires. It's, it is kind of a mess, but you can see right there. If you guys want to follow that exact part number, that's what it is. And it works great. These are the same relays I'm using on the fuel pump and for uh, all my injector stuff. So, and it seems to be working just fine. This one I believe I got from Amazon. Again, I'll put the link in the description below and that way you guys can buy the same ones. I think it's like a two pack. And then I also did these uh, cool like Dutch connectors and those are pretty easy to install as well. If you guys wanna see a video on how to do those, I can, uh, but I'm not gonna pull it all apart right now because it's all in there and wired. But you can see just you got the four wires there and this is what your wiring diagram is going to look like. I'll try to show you guys there. Okay. So that's all you need. Pretty straightforward with this one, because I am running it to a switch inside the car. I don't have it to the ignition on coming from the car. So on this, you guys can see that it's an ignition. That's going to be actually to your switch. So because I'm running it to a toggle switch, it's not running from the ignition. The ignition would mean that you're switching it to the accessory mode and then you'd have power 
to the fan and then it would kick the fan on and then the fan would basically just run constantly unless you had like a temperature switch or something like that but that's what that means so ignition slash switch and then that's pretty much it okay and then every radiator fan is going to have two wires coming out of it since i did this these fans you can switch from a puller to a pusher or from a pusher to a puller there's just a little nut on the back side. You can just, on the back side of this, you can't see because it it's in there. But you take that nut off, you can flip the fan around, and then that'll switch the blades. I think you can also reverse the polarity on this and make the motor run backwards. I could be wrong. I haven't done that. I literally just pulled off. I think it was like an 8 millimeter nut, and I just flipped the blades around and put it back on. And that's how I've been running ever since. Ready for this? This is my diagram. That's what you need to know right there. So you got two wires coming off the fan. One's going to my Dutch connector, then to the relay. The other wire's going to ground. Then from the relay, you got another ground. Then you have the switch, and then you have your 12-volt constant. Pretty straightforward. The switch itself is also going to have to have a ground, so I'm not going to pull that out right now. I know, guys, sorry. That's kind of a, it's a pain to pull all this stuff back out to show you. But you will have a couple things on the, on the switch that you'll need to know. Maybe I'll draw you a quick little diagram so you know how to hook the switch up if you're going to do it exactly like I'm doing on here. And look at the picture of that fan. That is gorgeous. There's my switch. I guess it's actually pretty straightforward. I don't know. I was thinking it was more complicating. But you're going to have one wire that's going to go to ground somewhere again on chassis. Or if you want to hook it onto something in the dashboard, which I have mine that, that's hooked up that way. And it's been fine. I think it actually goes to the cross member that's like inside the dashboard. So it's a pretty solid ground, but I could potentially run into issues. Then you got your 12 volt constant right from the uh, battery or you know wherever you want to pick that off. Or if it's an accessory switch. You can hook the 12 volt right up to the switch itself and then to the fan. So you're basically creating the loop here in the switch. And then the other wire is going to go to your fan, which is that wire, which is going to be that wire right there that says switch. I know you guys are like, man, this video is so good. It's got the best information ever. You should be an electrician. That's a joke. But this is how I have it wired. This is how I have everything, I have everything wired. It's pretty straightforward. I know it can be kind of seem kind of daunting, but it's really not. Make sure you're running fuses as well. That's one thing I did leave out is between the 12 volt to the fan, you're going to want to run a fuse in there. So you don't want to, you want to flick on your switch, right? And then all of a sudden it's going to go and it's going to burn something up. It's going to either burn up your relay or do something to your fan. You want to put a, a fuse in between the switch and the fan itself. So that way you don't have a, a bump in uh power so if you have some sort of weird wire that's been clipped or damaged or something or the fan is seized and stuck it'll pop that fuse before it burns anything else out and causes further issues if that makes sense now when you buy these radiator fans even if it's just a off-brand no-name electric radiator fan they'll come with these like little zip tie looking things so what you'll do is it'll go through the one side of the fan the little bracket through the radiator itself and then on the back side so i'm going to see if you can see it it might be a little dark so there's one right there you can see might be a little hard to see that lights right there so there's four of those you can see another one right there so they're like these little flat little plates and then you push the zip tie through the radiator or sorry through the fan the radiator and then the backing thing zips down and that's what holds the radiator fan to the radiator itself and then you just clip the ends you can get those from amazon they sell a, a kit that you can buy that's just a generic zip tie style little radiator fan clip thing whatever you want to call it and then just hook those on if you ever have to pull the radiator fan off you're gonna to have to cut those things and you could potentially ruin the fins and the radiator so just kind of make note of that one and the other reason why i put the dutch connector in there is if i do need to take the radiator out i'm not hardwired to the car i can just disconnect that connector pull the radiator fan out the wires will come with the radiator and i can put the radiator to the side and i don't have to like cut wires and redo everything and make it a whole mess and yeah so anyway there you go. So this is kind of a shorter video. Like I said, guys, it's freezing, and I just wanted to do this for you guys to show you. I've got my fellow super guys been messaging me. You guys are awesome, and I love to see that you're trying to figure things out. And I love that you guys are coming to me for, for help. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm here. So don't hesitate to hit me up ever. If you guys message me on Instagram, I will do my best to message you back. So I'm just here to help you guys any way I can. If this information is not correct, don't get mad at me, okay? Just put in the comments below, hey, you did this wrong. Great. I'm not going to be upset, guys. I, I've got pretty tough skin. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to get butt hurt. It'll be fine. Okay? I just would like to get the correct information out there for you guys. So I'm not giving you misinformation. And then you guys are like, what the freak, man? This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. 
okay just we're we're all here to help each other out i know some of you guys have, have corrected me some on some stuff in comments and have asked me why would you do this versus that and i try to i try to comment back if it's like not a brief comment back i may just be like yeah sorry i will figure it out later but yeah hopefully this helps you guys out i think most of you are just after the wiring diagram that i showed you there it's it's really easy and that will apply to anything so if you're doing um fuel fuel pump you're doing even lights like you're gonna run like led lights like i've got here okay all the lights on my side by side same thing hook up a relay it's really straightforward guys that that little diagram will apply pretty much to anything you're wanting to run 12 volts to so there you go with that being said guys thank you so much for watching if you're new to the channel don't forget to smash that subscribe button like comment on the videos I know some of you guys were, were bummed about the Can-Am video that I did with uh, the blow-off valve, but some of you guys liked it. I don't know, just thought I needed to do it for you guys, hope you guys out there. But since we're back to the regular super stuff, so I do have another video that I will be putting out uh, probably next week, and that'll be for the seats. Some of you guys have asked me about these Corbo stiff back seats. They're a non-recliner, and I've got them for both passenger and driver side, and I've made my own mounts for them, and they sit perfect in there. Plan on doing a video on those and there's more videos to come. If again, as always, if there's something you guys would like me to talk about that you're not sure on, you're trying to figure out what to do with this car and you're in a roadblock or something, just hit me up. Okay. I, I will try to get back to you as quick as I can, like I said before. So that being said, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.